We're talking about two nuclear rivals, India and Pakistan, um, and the disputed region of Kashmir. If you can explain to this global audience how high the stakes are now, why the Indian Prime Minister Modi has done this, and do you see this as a possible um, flashpoint? with thousands more soldiers brought into this, one of the most militarized areas of the world? Well, yes. I mean, I think it's a kind of exercise in completely authoritarian power. And I think there are two big questions here. What does it mean for Kashmiris? And I think both Sanjay Kak and Mirza Wahid have given us some sense of that. But what it also means for India, in the sense that parliamentary democracy is really a sham, that is what Modi and the BJP are revealing again and again and again, that just by fiat they can sort of decide on something, on the fate of a large group of people. Now, of course, which groups of people is really important, and it's not accidental. It is the fact that, you know, the target is really Kashmiris and Kashmiri Muslims uh, in, in particular. Um, and, you know, this, so this is basically Modi's way of distracting from the large-scale uh, problems that continue to sort of, you know, um, uh, that continue to plague India under his rule, which includes the economic, uh, you know, that economically India is doing badly, environmentally it's a disaster. It is, it is, it is the heart of climate change. The Indian subcontinent is at the heart of climate change. So you know, with the kind of populations, with the kind of poverty. And there's nothing that's being done about it. And instead, Modi is giving, Modi and the BJP are giving the supporters uh, something to feel triumphant about by seeing the Kashmiris basically being turned into prisoners in their own, uh, in their, in their own home. Um, and this is a majority Muslim population, the only one in. Um... It is, it is. But you know, one of, it, it is, it is, and it is obviously for the Hindu right BJP. This is the primary target of hatred, which is not to say that they don't hate others. They hate all minorities, all dissenters. And I think one of the big questions is not only what does it mean for Kashmir, but that, you know, this could happen in India. Tomorrow, Modi could decide to split another Indian state into two. And, you know, again, you know, this is completely—it's uh, a kind of uh, escalation of the kind of violence. And the Indian state is not benign and democratic and, you know, even without the Modi and the, without Modi and the BJP. But this is a kind of escalation of violence, an escalation of exercise of power from Delhi, uh, and it's being done with the kind of short-term gains in mind. There is no, there is no long-term view. For the poor in India, there has always been this story that has been uh, this fake news produced by the BJP campaigning that Kashmiri Muslims get special privileges. And the very sort of raw example of this would be, uh, you know, a political uh, um, a street address that I heard in Calcutta in, in passing many years ago, where the BJP speaker was saying that, you know, Kashmiris get subsidized meat from the Indian government for a price that you won't even be able to buy dog meat in Calcutta. This is clearly directed at the large masses of the Indian poor, that Kashmiris—and this is said of other groups as well, including Indian Muslims as well—that they get special privileges. It's like—it's similar to the welfare queen comment that, you know, Americans uh, make about uh, its black minorities, that, you know, they get special privileges. And it plays on to the same kind of majoritarianism, same kind kind of sectarian nationalism. So that's one part of it. The other part of it is for the other part of India's uh, BJP support, which is the sort of the more elite, the business crowd. And it is that now you can go into Kashmir and buy land. Um, you know, on social media is, has been, uh, is filled with Hindu right supporters of Modi saying, we will now marry Kashmiri women. And you can kind of see the settler, colonial, racist, sexist sort of the rhetoric at the heart of it. And so the idea is that they can now purchase land in Kashmir and basically turn it into investment destination. So that's what Modi is doing. And so in that sense, I think there is a sense that, you know, we are going to let more um, Hindus move into Kashmir. I will just say one thing, though. Kashmir is not alone. 
in this kind of protection of land rights. This is common in many border parts of India, where there are minorities or indigenous people. This is true in many parts of the Northeast, including the state where I grew up, in Meghalaya, where the similar protection is in place, that you cannot buy land uh, if you are not from the indigenous groups there in order to protect them from being swamped by much more pe power, you know, people with much more access to capital, essentially. So it's not. But the BJP, particularly in the Hindu right, makes an issue out of it with regard to Kashmiri Muslims alone.